Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be testing streaming PC and console games on the Pentium G4560 and the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. First of all, if you want to just see the stream itself and you're not interested in the details, just follow the link down in the description, which will take you to the whole stream. So you can see how it looks like, how it performs, all that kind of stuff. I'll test by streaming at 1080p 60 frames per second. Then if necessary, if the game is too demanding or something like that, I'll just drop to 1080p 30 or 720p 30. For the PS4 capture from the PC, a capture card is needed since that's how you get the image from the console. The one I use is the Aver Media Live Gamer Extreme, which is capable of up to 1080p 60fps capture. For the PC gaming and streams, I just captured using the PC itself. I'll give you more details now when I explain the config I use at OBS Studio. Remember that you also need a good enough upload speed. I will consider 3 megabits per second upload as the minimum for 720p 30fps streams that look good enough. But that's my personal preference. There's a link down in the description on how to test your internet's upload and download speeds. So first I'll show you the config for OBS Studio. So as you can see, here's OBS Studio. I already created many scenes. Scenes are places where you have different kinds of things. First of all, here in high, in the scene high, I have the C920, which is the webcam, as you can see. I turn it off again since it's out of sync with what I'm saying. Then I created another scene called PC. As you can see, it has a nice transition between scenes. That's what OBS Studio has. So on PC, just this scene, as you can see here. Let me zoom in. As you can see, it has explanation, CPU usage, C920, chat, and display capture. So display capture is the just what I'm capturing on the PC, as you can see. It's called display capture. To add one of those things, just come here. Video capture device is, for example, if you have a capture card or a, or a webcam, like I did with the C920. I can tweak stuff from here, as you can see. But that's not what I'm trying to explain, just to give you an overview of what's going on. CPU usage was just MSI Afterburner that is running in the background. I made a, just a window capture of this and put it here, as you can see. And well, finally, explanation is just putting text like that, and this window will show up, so you can write whatever you want. And if you want to just move stuff here, you can do so just fine. Not much to worry about. And on console, we have different things. We have the webcam, the same, CPU usage, C920, the chat, but we are using the capture card here. So the capture card is connected to the console, uh, and well, the capture card is connected to the PC by a USB. So we have HDMI to the console, and USB to the PC, so we get this, this image right here, as you can see. Video capture device, Avermedia GC550 video capture, which is the Live Gamer Extreme. And here I chose the settings. It does up to 1080p 60fps. And here you have the mixer. This is the mic, the desktop audio, so you can control the, the audio of your PC and the audio of the console. As you can see, video capture device, this is the capture card. And this is from the camera, the webcam. I recommend if you have many microphones, for example, you have one, I'm using the, the Yeti right now, the Blue Yeti, but we also have the webcam, so just disable it, so you don't get audio from the webcam and from the microphone at the same time. It will sound horrible, so just disable this microphone. And well, for the configuration, we go to settings in OBS. So let's start with this on stream. Streaming services, YouTube gaming, just just select Twitch or YouTube, the one you're using, it works the same. Then the server, you have the primary YouTube ingest server or the backup. And this is the stream key, which I won't show. You can find your stream key on the dashboard of both YouTube or Twitch. So you can find it pretty easily. Then on output, we have simple and advanced. I suggest selecting advanced, it has way more options. And here we have the encoder. We have the NVIDIA encoder, which is this one, which uses the graphics card, and X264, which uses the CPU. Using the NVIDIA one uses way less CPU since it's just moving the stuff to the graphics card to work with the graphics card. Then the rate control, we have constant bitrate, variable bitrate, and those are the two that I don't care about. I personally will stick to this one. It uses a little more bandwidth, but instead of just 
instead of just changing the bitrate while you're just streaming it will just make the same bitrate all the time it will use more bandwidth so i recommend using variable bitrate if you have for example a worse connection than me then we have here the bitrate which well will determine the quality of the stream pretty much this value depends on your connection if your my upload speed is 10 megabits per second so i just selected 6000 but i can select 8000 just fine and on twitch for example you cannot do more than 6000 since that's the limit of twitch if you do more it will be useless since twitch will show up to 6000 so keep that in mind i recommend this one for 1080p if you're doing 720p for example 3000 should be fine then keyframe interval, it all depends on where you're live streaming to. Twitch requires two keyframe intervals, or at least they recommend that. YouTube, I think it's the same. Then the preset, well, you have these presets. I didn't really play much with them. I use default. Then on profile, I use main, which is the one that Twitch and YouTube recommend. Level, I didn't touch this either. Then use to pass encoding. I don't think they are using this live, but I kept it as default, just the box checked. Then on GPU, I'm not sure what they mean by GPU, so I kept it on zero. And B frames by default was on two. I didn't see much of a difference with this either. So yeah, I kept it like this. When I switch to 720p, I do different things, but I'll show you that later. Then on recording, this is if you want to store your live stream on your PC. So I put this to be recorded to this folder. And the recording format, you have Flash, MP4, MOV, MKV, TS. I recommend FLB or MOV. If you use MP4, it says that if your computer crashes, for example, the file won't be, will be useless. I mean, you'll lose the file if you're just streaming and your PC crashes. So I recommend just staying with FLB or MOV. Then the encoder, the encoder for the recording, you can, if you want, if you have a good enough PC, you can use this to stream and this other one to, to record the file to your PC. But I use the same encoder, so I'm at the same time that I'm streaming, I'm saving that into my PC. Then not much else from here, I kept it like it is. That's for the output. Then on audio, I didn't touch anything at all. But if you want to put a default audio device, you can do so just fine, or a mic, or all kind of stuff that you want it to be default. Then on video, this is important. This is for the resolution that you will see the stream. For example, I mean, the window of OBS, it will be 1080p. So if you have a 1080p monitor, this will be what you want to set it as, the resolution of your monitor. And then the output, which is what the stream will be looked at. For example, if I want to stream at 720p, I'll put here 720p, and that's it. It will show me my 1080p screen, but it will be 720p. Just stream at 720p for better performance. You can even stream at lower resolutions if you want to, as low as 360p. So you have options there. And then on FPS, well, just the frame rate, if you want a 60fps stream, a 30fps stream, I recommend uh, 60 FPS or 30. Most services use that, or 29.97 if you want to select that. You have even more options here. You can choose whatever value you want, but I recommend using 30 or 60, depending on your PC. And you have hotkeys if you want to set them to your PC here. A hotkey to start streaming, to stop, to many things, transitions. So that's good to have if you want to use it. I don't personally use it. On advanced, I think I didn't touch anything here, as far as I remember. But yeah, that's pretty much the configuration I used. Not really anything special. But yeah, if you're going for 720p, just lower this to 720p. And if you want to lower the bitrate because your connection is not good enough, just put 3000 or whatever you want to use, or you need to use. Oh yeah, those were pretty much the settings I use. But um, on the console part, for example, I use 1080p60. I'll talk more about that in a second, which I use for each and how each game performed. But remember, if you want to change those values on the fly, it will be quite difficult. You have to just stop the stream, change the values, for example, the resolution, and then start the stream again. So keep that in mind. I did that a lot in my live stream. But yeah, 
not much else to say about this. Now I'm going to tell you how to make the chat show up. For example, I just made a window capture. So you just make a window capture here and just like Google Chrome. But the problem with Google Chrome is that you need to configure something before. If not, you'll get a black screen. So you have to go into the options of Chrome, into advanced. You go all the way down. And here it says use hardware acceleration when available. This is by default is checked. Just disable it. That will allow you to see the chat. Use the window mode in order to see the chat here. So as long as hardware acceleration on Chrome is disabled, you can use the chat here and you'll be able to see the chat. You can just change the size and put it here like I did. And that's pretty much it for the configuration. Now I'm going to talk to you about performance and my overall recommendations. On PC, I first tested CSGO. I used 1080p 60fps on the stream and I capped the game at 70 frames per second. Link on how to cap your frame rate on a game down in the description, made by me if you're interested. And the game was playable, but it dropped quite a lot below 60 frames per second and the frame times were very variable, which made the game harder to control. I recommend the stream quality to be at 720p 60fps on this one or 1080p 30fps and play the game using 1080p with medium or low settings, so the fps won't drop too low when smoke shows up. For CSGO streaming it works pretty well in my opinion, not perfect, but remember that we are using a very cheap CPU, a 2 core and 4 thread CPU. Then on GTA 5 I recommend capping the game at 30 or 45 frames per Per second so the CPU usage is lower and also lower the draw distance which will help a little more on the CPU usage. So far the best way was to stream it at 720p 30 frames per second since anything over that had a bigger impact in the frame times. If you don't care much about that just do 1080p 30fps on the stream and just play GTA 5. And well for finishing the PC streaming tests I tested Overwatch in the end. It was the worst performing of the three games so far, 1080p 60 and 1080p 30 streaming was a stuttery mess and frame times were all over the place. The best way to play this game was a 60fps cap plus a 720p 30fps stream. It still has many drops in the frame rate but it was way more stable than on 1080p streams, especially when there's a lot going on. The game can be as slow as 30 frames per second so I would avoid Overwatch unless you're willing to cap it at 30 frames per second, the game itself so it feels more consistent. Then I tested streaming using a PC but taking the image from a PS4, so I'm doing a console stream for saying it some way. For that a capture card is necessary, you cannot do it without a capture card if you want to use your PC. So I use an Avermedia Live Gamer Extreme capture card which records up to 1080p and 60fps. The reason why I made the console test was because the streaming options from the console itself is a much lower bitrate and it's only 720p 30 frames per second. And by using OBS on my PC, I'm able to customize my live stream how I want. I can add more stuff. So I played The Last of Us, Remastered and Uncharted The Nathan Drake Collection on Uncharted 2. Since both games run at 1080p 60fps on the PS4. So you could see that I'm actually streaming at 60 frames per second there. And well, it ran without a problem. It didn't drop frames on the live stream and it was very smooth. That's because the PC is only recording and streaming while the PS4 is taking care of running the game. That's why the stream is not suffering at all. It's just separate, separate things. So in conclusion, yes, I would recommend this PC for light streaming. For example, CSGO, League of Legends, Dota 2, those types of games with a 60 frames per second or 70 frames per second cap that's necessary to lower the CPU usage. If you want to play at 100 frames per second or 150 frames per second, you'll need a better CPU since the PC is doing the encoding for the live stream and is running the game at the same time. And after capping those games at 60 or 70 frames per second, I would stream at 1080p 30 or 720p 60. And for the case of GTA 5, it ran good using 720p 30fps streams because it has some hitches. GTA 5 wasn't perfect, but at 720p 30, it was way more playable than 1080p so I would recommend if you want to play GTA 5 to use it that way but I think that for starting just live streaming it holds up pretty well then if you want to do console streams for example with capture cards or capture another PC this holds up pretty well doing the stream only with no games in the background but yeah this is possible due to the encoder we used the NVIDIA encoder that uses the GPU which allows us to get much lower CPU usage so yeah guys those are my conclusions that's pretty much it I hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching and see you next time